This is the Emergency Medical Minute. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. So we'll talk about um, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Saw a patient uh, the other night with SBP, which I feel like uh, early in my career we used to see a lot of, and now we look for frequently but rarely find. And I'm not sure if that's actually the case or if it's the patient population has changed a little bit here or uh, if there is a decreased incidence. But uh, I thought it'd be good to go over it a little bit. So spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, peritonitis, we're talking about um, patients with cirrhosis, with ascites, so liver disease. Um, And uh, the definition is basically an infection of the ascites fluid that's not related to a surgically treatable cause, like a perforation, uh, an obstruction, or something that you can do surgically to repair it. Uh, We see it almost exclusively in patients with cirrhosis. Uh, Obviously, you have to have ascites with it. They usually come in complaining of uh, abdominal pain, fever, altered mental status is another uh, common finding. Um, Typically, we see a lot of uh, cirrhosis patients with a distended belly and pain, and many times if they're not really a tense societies and we don't feel like we want to do a large volume paracentesis, but they're having pain, that's why a lot of times you'll see us do these diagnostic taps. We'll say, uh, you know, you can wait a few days to have your large volume paracentesis, but let's make sure you don't have an infection and just draw off a little bit. When you do a diagnostic tap, um, you send it for Uh, Just like you would do for a lumbar puncture or a septic joint, you send it for a cell count, differential, gram stain, culture. We look at LDH, we look at LFTs, we look at lipase, we look at albumin as well. And typically the definition is uh, if you have um, greater than uh, 250 polymorph uh, polymorphonuclear nuclear cells so pm and polys uh, so if you took your um, white blood absolute white blood cell count of that fluid and you multiplied it by the percentage of polys it tells you whether you have um, uh, SBP or not if it's greater than 250 or if you have positive gram stain or positive cultures obviously we typically treat it with um, uh, uh, single coverage antibiotics a third gef- generation cephalosporins adequate cefotaxime right now is probably the best across the board but people have used amp and gent people use Leviquin, uh with variable success um, about 30 to 40 percent of uh, SBP patients will get renal failure, and that's a big cause of mortality in them. If your patient's in septic shock, so not just septic, but if they're in septic shock, they have about an 80 percent mortality with SBP. Um, a lot of these patients have uh, so many non-infection related comorbidities um, from their in stage liver disease that they have a high mortality anyway in the hospital. Um, very rarely with people who keep having recurrent infections, they will be placed on prophylactic antibiotics, but that's kind of a, a, a rare uh, um, occurrence and kind of something you do with last resort, something like Bactrim or Cipro sometimes used. But um, uh, always something we're looking for, something we rarely find nowadays and just thought I would go over. So SPP. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys, have a great night. We are on a quest to provide the world with free medical education. Please help us out by rating us on iTunes, following us on social media, and subscribing to our newsletter at emergencymedicalminute.com.